DeLeo with Michael Jackson's management. Uh, calling about Michael's appearance at the Civic Center. I'm sorry, I missed your name. It's Frank DeLeo, Michael Jackson's manager. I'm calling, uh, did you get a letter concerning Michael's appearance at the Civic Center? No, I didn't. Um, maybe you'd like to stick with my boss. Were you aware that Michael Jackson was going to be appearing there and we needed some things straightened out? No, not at all. Michael Jackson? Would you please put your boss on the telephone if he is there? Okay, hold on a moment, please. All right, did you get my name? Uh, was it Fred? No, Frank DeLeo. No, please. Frank. Can I, uh, hold on, Michael. Hold on, please. Okay. I just wanted to... Hold on, Michael. David Brickell speaking. This is Frank DeLeo with Michael Jackson. And I was wondering if you got the telegram that we we're going to call today and go over a few items for Michael's concert, which we're trying to book in your place. Uh, I'm sorry, M Michael Jackson, the singer, the... the Yes, no. Michael Michael is here. I need to speak to him just a second. I want to Hold speak on to just a second, Michael. Hold on, Michael. We'll be right there. I wanted to go over a few things in case we are going to do a concert there. And this this catches you totally off guard? I, I've received no word on the matter whatsoever. All right. Now, because we, we lined it up with a telegram because Michael wanted to talk to you and see if you could do certain things at the Civic Center to see if this could be pulled off. And uh, we've had some trouble, as you might have read, with certain places, and we thought that yours might be the perfect place. So, could you go over a few things with Michael now? Sure, let me get a, a pad here. Okay. I thought he had said he had spoken to you before. N no, I've not heard anything. Let me see. Hello? Hello? Y your first name, please. David? David, I want to ask you a few things, because I want to handle this for the fans and myself personally. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, an extra room that I could use, like during the show? Yes. I wanted you to get some mannequins, and... Uh, Mannequins. Mannequins. Yes. Can you write some of this down? Yeah, I'm. Yes, sir. I'm writing it down. Okay. I want one of the mannequins uh, face down on the carpet. Okay. 
face down. Face down on the carpet, and the other mannequin sitting on top of the face down mannequin's back. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Have you got a regulation against uh, snakes? No, I don't have a regulation against snakes. In other words, I could ha- I could have a ball constrictor. Um. I need. I'll write it down here. Let me see that. Mike. Just a second. He, he wanted snakes. Uh, is there any problem with snakes on this, Mr. Pickel? I don't see any regulation whatsoever um, okay. regarding that. Let me talk to him. I want to talk to him. I need uh, a golf bag. One golf bag? With the clubs taken out. With the clubs out? I sleep in the golf bag between shows. Okay, I'll get you a large, one large golf bag. Okay. I need a uh, Perriera. I'm sorry? Perriera. Perriera? You know that mineral water? Oh, certainly. How many mannequins can you get? How many would you like? Twenty would be okay. Twenty mannequins? Twenty. I mean, some of them are dressed. I don't want them to be dressed. You want twenty undressed mannequins? Right. I also want some Wheaties, please, in the dressing room. I'm sorry, Wheaties? Wheaties. And then would you, if you would, open the box and just put one Wheatie on a plate... Wait, wait a second. I, I'm, right, I'm trying to write this down. Now, you want one weedy out of the box there? Well, I have to eat. Uh, one weedy on a, on a plate here. Well, I'm writing this down. I, I don't understand this. Okay, that's okay. We'll come back to that. Um, and I need a separate room. I need like three rooms for three different gloves, okay? Three different rooms. Let me handle this, Mike. Uh, the glove is very important in the act. I guess you know that. Yes, I know, I know that. And he wants uh, three different rooms because the room is like a shrine to the glove, if you understand what we're talking about. I, I see. David, do you understand everything that we're talking about here? Because I just need to make sure. I'm, I've written everything down here. Um, I had absolutely no idea that the Jacksons were considering playing here. I don't think you do because you're on Gannett phone. What? You're on Gannett phone. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, we're burning your buns. <laughs> what? What's going on? Fuck! Come on! Stop this crap! <laughs> Dave! Fuck! What is this shit? <laughs> Easy, Dave! Easy, my ass! <laughs> my mannequin, thank you. My glove, thanks you. <laughs> hey, take that fuck glove and put it where the moon don't shine, asshole! <laughs> Choke on polished 
Give me the victim's first name. Manny. All right. It's got to be good. I, I can tell from your voice. It is. <laughs> All right. Lay it on me. Okay. He's this guy in our aerobics class, and he's really embarrassing because he doesn't wear any underwear, and he gives everybody a free show, and we want you to kind of get him kicked out of the class, give him a real scare. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he, he doesn't wear anything under his gym shorts. Nothing. Oh, boy. Baggy shorts. <laughs> and you, you haven't been looking, have you, Roberta? You can't help but look. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How, how do you know this guy? We work in the same office together. Oh, boy. All right, well, let's call Manny. Hello? Call it for Manny, please. Speaking. Yeah, Manny, this is Bob over here at the gym. You know where the aerobics class is? Oh, yeah, yeah. How's Did, it going? Well, we got a problem. Some ladies had turned you in because uh, you were in their aerobics class, and they said that, that you uh, had been exposing yourself in the class. Exposing myself? Yeah, do you, do you know what that means? Oh, well, yeah, but I... They said that you, you wore no uh, underwear under your gym shorts, no underwear, and that when you jog up and down and everything, that it was just pretty well grossing them out. Well, oh... <laughs> What, have they been looking or what? Well, they said they couldn't help it, that uh, it's just terrible and that uh, you, you look like you intentionally did this and then asked me to get you out of the class. What? You mean some lady there said that she saw me hanging out of my trunks? Yeah. What is this? Well, uh, that's what she said, and I, uh, I, you know, I have to kick you out of the aerobics class because they, uh, I have no reason to doubt these women. And... Uh, what do you mean, kick me out? Can, you know, here are these these. Well, excuse me, sir. Can you not wear some underwear when you're jogging up and down, or is, uh, some type of strap in there? Hey, man, what is this, man? If I want my pet to hang out all over the floor, that's my business, man. God. Well, now, don't. I don't think you ought to be using that language to me on the telephone now. Hey, well, I'm. Pissed. First of all, you're calling me in the early in the morning and telling me all this bullshit, you know, about my, you know, my dog hanging out. That's my business, man. And what about these fat bimbos over there with all their hanging out and their ass hanging out? God. Are you talking about the women? Well, yeah. Who else? Well, I pers personally don't appreciate the fact that you said that you like to have your <laughs> hanging out on the floor like that. Now, I bet I they like it, too. What's that, sir? I, I said I bet they like it, too. Well, they've been reporting you, so they obviously don't like it at all. Oh, I don't believe this, man. You know, come on, Bob, man. Now, you're out of the class, and I, I can see that they said that your attitude would be bad about this. I think that you're an exhibitionist and that you've been trying to show yourself to these women. Hey, f*** you, man. You know what? If, if they're tired of, of seeing me hang out in my trunks, the next time I go down there, I'm going to drop my drawers right there and just jog around the place so all them women can get hot and bothered. Cause you know that's what's really going on, man. We don't appreciate that attitude, sir. Hey, well, uh, tough s***. Man, you guys are full of it. Well, no, nah, I don't appreciate that. And you know, something that you may not appreciate is that your untended phone and... Oh. The... <laughs> is this Rick Dees? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> you had <asshole. laughs> <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> Thank you. 
When Sally sniffs glue, her eyes get red and bulgy, then her hair begins to fall. <laughs> Thanks for calling the Triplex Theater. We have starting over in 10. Starting over starts at 6 and starts over again at 10. 10 plays at 8, tomorrow 9 to 5 and 8 and a half. 8 and a half plays at 5 and 9, 9 to 5 plays 8 and again at 11. This weekend, never say never again and play it again, Sam. Never say never again, plays at 5, again at 9, never at 7. Play it again, Sam, plays at 7, plays again at 11. Saturday Night Fever, never on Sunday, on Saturday. Never on Sunday, plays at 5 and 9, Saturday Night Fever at 7. Saturday Night Fever plays on Sunday at 5 and 9. Please hesitate to call back. What? <laughs> what? Turn the record over, please. T- turn the record over. <laughs>
You got a victim for candid phone, and I love it. Yeah. What's the first um, name of the victim? Her name is Myra. You're whispering, is she nearby? Yeah. <laughs> no, her name is Myra, and she's the office manager. Uh-oh. And um, she, she's going to go and see the Julio Iglesias show at the MGM in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And she made her room reservations in the hotel like around a month ago. But she hasn't paid for it. She's waiting till the last minute to send in the check. What I want you to do is I want you to call her and tell her that her room has been canceled. Since it has not been paid, they have to put other people that already paid for it. And that she doesn't have no room for that date. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to get mad. Good morning, Continental Dance. Calling for Myra Rodriguez, please. Speaking. Myra? Uh-huh. Bob Hayes, how are you? Fine, thank you. I got uh, the computer. You got the printout. Yeah. We got a deal here. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, there's a show. To, uh, okay. We had to cancel out your reservation for the 29th. We you did. Why? You send no money, you get no room. I'm sending the money today, and I made the reservations early. Well, everybody tells us the check's in the mail. You know what I'm talking about, Myra? Well, but I am sending it. It's that, you know... I tell you what... Oh, come on, please. What we could do, uh, the we can put you in a room with another couple, the, uh, the Estradas. No, 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 I don't want that. What? Hey, listen, I made my reservation two weeks ago. Okay? We're still three weeks away for the show. Well, I could put you in a room with the, uh, there's a couple of the Estradas, and they'll sleep in one bed, and you sleep How in... How can I sleep with someone that I don't know? I don't want nothing like that. I, I think that's very cool, because I made my reservations, and then I still got three weeks ahead. All right. So I think that's very unfair. Okay, would, would, you, would you sleep with another couple? Uh... No, I would not sleep with someone that I don't know. Hmm. Well, not what I heard. That's very cool, you know, from you guys. That's really chic and shit, because I made my reservations. It's really what? I'm sorry. That's really chic and shit. Mm-hmm. I want my room, because I made the reservations. Okay, okay, okay. If, if you'd come by and let me uh, touch on your butt, maybe I'd give you room for free. Hell no. What? You're getting out of line. What? You said you want to touch my boot, please? Yeah. Let me talk to your supervisor. Okay, let me get him. Uh, yeah, this is the supervisor. This is Rick Dees, and you're on candid phone. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> this girl here, you guys are going to get it. <laughs> Did I, was I getting mad? <laughs>
What's the victim's first name? Okay, her name is Wendy. Mm-hmm, and what happened to Wendy? Okay, Wendy was going down the expressway one evening. She hits this dog, and the owners won't have anything to do with this dog. When the pound called to tell them to pick it up, um, the owner said, no, no way. I'm sorry, it's hers now. And so tell her that you're a mortician, and because this dog weighed over 125 pounds, it needed a funeral. <laughs> And she's going to have to pay for this funeral. <laughs> she's going to have to pay for it to be picked up from the pound, embalmed, the makeup artist. Oh, that's great. Will she, she fall for this? She's so gullible. Isn't this going to be great? Hello? Time for Wendy, please. Um, yeah, this is Wendy. Wendy, this is Ray De La Garza at Forest Lawn. How are you? Uh, um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm calling about the dog. Did you get our message yesterday? No. What What are you talking about? Well, there's a dog that uh, we have the burial and the ceremony and everything, and now there's a bill, an outstanding bill of $627, and we were to call you, and, and this was to be a, have been taken care of. What? Did You did not get the message, obviously. No. We, no. Well, they said that you hit a dog and that uh, the, the services were to be charged to you. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I hit a dog, um, but listen. But here. they told me that like everything was taken care of. No, 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 no. Let me run this down for you, okay? We have a bill of six hundred twenty-seven dollars. There was the uh, the embalming. There's a oh, the, no. there's a makeup a charge here. Makeup for a dog. Well, yes, there was a full funeral here. The the viewing was uh when was that, Bob? Two days ago. That was two days. Two days. Uh, being a dog and everything, we had to rent mourners. There's, uh... Did you not get our message? Well, no. Well, see, um, there's a new ordinance from the SPCA that any dog that's over 100 pounds has to have uh, the services and everything and go through this... A funeral? The dog has to have a funeral? Well, th yes. Th that was requested by the family, and they said that you were going to pick up the tab on this, so there... I never heard of anything like that. Well, we rented mourners, and uh, they threw uh, Gainsburgers and, and broke them up and threw them uh, over the... That is a stupid 
stupidest thing I ever heard of. I'm not paying $600 for a dog's funeral. No, it's $627, and we expect payment on this because we have a, a bill for the embalming. The, there was a, a, a gigantic makeup job on this. Makeup for dog? Yes. We had to starch the tail. We've had to, we had a viewing. We had to, they wanted a, the, a kind of a panting look on the dog's face, and then, if I may say so myself, uh, we're at Forest Lawn, and we do an excellent job. Oh, great, great. Well, I'm, why are you so upset, ma'am? This was supposed to have been taken care of by, by you. The dog is, is gone now, and it's, 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 it's history, so... I don't even know this dog, okay? Well, you hit the dog, so that makes you... I can't believe this. We had to rent mourners. This, this is actually... It should have been more than $627, but it... Well, I mean, I'm sorry that it happened, okay? But, but I'm not paying $600 for a dog to have a funeral and mourners and makeup and stuff. I mean, I mean I'm just not. Well, that is terrible. Who is going to pay for this? Now, listen, listen. This is like the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my life. No, it's not, because the stupidest thing you've ever heard is, Your untended phone, and this is Rick Dees. <laughs> Rick Dees. Is this Rick Dees? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I, what a bunch of shit, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly is burning your buns. <laughs> Beverly did this? Yes. Beverly, she is such a bitch. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> You are an idiot! Oh, 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 Buy yourself a new truck, buy yourself a new truck, buy yourself a new truck today! Okay. Lowest price import truck in the state, $5,874, base list price. Comparison excluding taxes, standard equipment levels vary. 8.7% annual percentage rate financing for qualified buyers. That's enough. Only at participating dealers. Stop Dealer it. contributions may affect final price. $5,874, base list Get price. Shut up. Comparison excluding taxes, standard shut up. equipment levels vary. 8.7% annual percentage rate financing That's for qualified buyers. Shut up. Only at participating dealers. <laughs> Prices may vary. Concentrate on my work downstairs. Oh, back now. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, here. You're on candid phone. Ha, 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 ha. Hi, you, Mona. Hi. They tell me you have a candid phone. Yes, I do. All right, the victim's name is... Carolyn. Tell me about Carolyn. Well, we work at this insurance company, but at night she sings at a Holiday Inn. She's always thinking she's going to get discovered, right? <laughs> and I wanted you to call her and play with her and tell her you're from a record company and you've been watching her. <laughs> this is great. Hello? Calling for Carolyn, please. Hi, this is Carolyn. Yes, Carolyn. I'm sorry to call you so early. This is Al Corey, and I uh, caught your show last night. Huh, really? Yes, and uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you what I do. I'm a record company executive, and we're working on a film, and we were very interested in you. You're kidding. Well, you are fantastic, and we were just, uh, oh. There's a guy named John Brody. Are you familiar with the name John Brody? No. John is the president of Columbia Pictures, and uh, we're working on a film with Dudley Moore, and uh, you're perfect. Dudley Moore? Yes, and we wanted you to play. It's in a. It's in two scenes opposite Dudley. I can't believe you'd be interested in me. This is a weird request, but you sang "Feelings" last night, and John Brody and I were sitting there, and he said, "Al, that is it." And could you just sing like you know, the first couple of 
bars of feelings just to make sure that you're the one? Well, I need the band with me. I'm, I need the backup music. Well, I understand that, but just over the phone, a cappella, if you don't mind. Just, just like one or two notes, just to make sure. Feelings, mm. nothing more than feelings. Mm, that's fantastic. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that is great. The morning after, you remember from the Poseidon Adventure when you got into that? I, yeah. Just a little bit of the morning after? There's got to be a morning after. Oh, it's amazing. Where do you work now? Well, I work at, I'm an insurance worker right now during the day. Mm -hmm. I work at the Holiday Inn at night. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we, that's no problem. I don't know if you, how long you'll be in the insurance business with that voice and uh, with this movie and everything. But this but, is just great. It's a great scene with Dudley Moore. You're you're naked at a piano, and he comes in there, and he can only see you like from the the neck up, and you're playing the piano and and singing feelings. Naked. Yes, I told you it's a nude scene, right, in this movie. No. And anyway, he he comes in, and he sees you naked at the piano, and you're doing feelings in his. I don't know if I can do a scene naked. I mean. I I didn't. I, I told. I just, I'm just not like that. Well, it was a nude scene. He comes up, but but well, the funny part is when he sees you, he reaches out. And grabs your... <laughs> no, no way. I don't think I can do this. Well, can we put in another girl there and I'll do the singing? Well, no, no, because you have a nice figure. He, wanted to, you know, he comes up and he starts tweaking your nipples. Well, <laughs> no, I don't... This, this doesn't sound right. I just... I couldn't do that. Well, we were going to have him cut his, his hands around your ass. That we, you know. No, no, this doesn't sound right at all. Does it sound like candid phone? Oh! Oh my God! Is this Rick Dees? You're uncandid. Phone. I don't believe it. I should have known. This is. <laughs> You're uncandid. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Who did this? Mona. Oh, I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> She's gonna pay for this. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,